Chiasmus. What is chiasmus? Chiasmus is a figure of speech where two or more clauses are related to each other through reverse parallelism. If you're thinking at this point, wait, what? You're all right. Don't worry. Everybody else asks the same question. So let's take this step by step so we fully understand what chiasmus is. The word chiasmus comes from the Greek word chiazo, which means to cross or make an X. In Greek, that letter X is actually called ki, so chiazo means to make a key. Now, why is this important? Because in order to understand chiasmus, the easiest way is by drawing an X. And I'll show you an example right now. We have a phrase here, eat to live. This phrase has a meaning. It means survival. If you're eating to live, you're worried about survival, nothing more. You're not there to test all the best types of foods and go to the greatest restaurants. You are just doing this to survive. If I take that last term and draw an arrow diagonally and make that term the first in the next phrase, so live, and I take the first word of the phrase eat and make it last in the new phrase i've switched around the order so eat to live has now become live to eat if you notice those arrows drew an x a key so by drawing an x we were able to switch the order so eat to live meant survival but live to eat means something totally different it means I'm trying all the greatest foods now, going to the best restaurants. I'm a glutton. That is a very different meaning. And that is what chiasmus is. It reverses the clause's order to achieve a reverse parallelism. So different ideas by switching the order of the words. It's a really cool and powerful device. But that's how it works. So let's take a look at the full sentence. Some people live to eat, while others eat to live. Live to eat's the first phrase, it's reversed in eat to live, and it makes a very nice effect when speaking, because it shows different ideas by reversing the order of the words. Let's try another example. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Theodore Roosevelt said this. There are the two phrases that have reversed order. So the first phrase, care how much you know, is turned into know how much you care. We can draw that X again. So we bring the last term, know, to the front of the next phrase. Then we bring the first term, care, and make it the last term, in the next phrase. Then we bring the middle words straight down. So care how much you know has become know how much you care. Care how much you know has the idea of respect, impression, whereas know how much you care has the idea of they've made an emotional connection. So the first phrase has the idea of an intellectual, of a mental connection, but know how much you care has the idea of an emotional, personal connection. So the idea has changed. Even though the words are the same, but their order has reversed, it has switched the actual meaning. So the first was caring about knowing, and the second is knowing about caring. Let's try another example. Those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. Well, I mean, pretty much the whole thing's reversed. But this one works a little bit differently. Let me show you how. The phrase those who, you have to keep it off to the side. Then you bring it straight down. What you're left with is the phrase Again, we're looking at the phrase. So mind don't matter. We're going to bring the last term matter first. Then we're going to bring the first term mind 
and make it last. And we're going to bring the middle term straight down. So those who mind don't matter has become those who matter don't mind. So at first it's saying the people who are always bringing up some type of drama about things are not important. But the people that are important don't bring drama up. That is another example of chiasmus. Now, how do we identify chiasmus? Well, it's a step-by-step -step process. So to recap what we just did in the last several examples, the first step, we have to look for two parts of a sentence that appear to have the same set of words. Not in the same order, but the same set of words. It's usually three to five words. Of course, it can be way more than that. But as a start, since this is a new skill for you, think three to five words. That's what you're trying to look for. If you can find three to five words that occur more than once in a sentence, you're probably starting to identify some type of chiasmus. But that's not the only thing you must do. The next step is you need to isolate those set of words and put them one over the other. The first phrase, put it on top of the second phrase. After you have done that, you should draw an arrow from the last term and make it first in the next phrase. Then you draw an arrow from the first term and make it last. Then you keep the middle set of words in the same place or change the verb to the negative. We'll see an example of that in a moment. But if the words that you have lined up one over the other fit this pattern, then you have identified chiasmus in a sentence. And that sentence is using chiasmus. So it's a five-step process. If it's a little bit fuzzy, copy this down in your notes and watch the next several set of examples. Love makes time pass. And time makes love pass. So we have to look for words that are the same that occur more than once in a sentence. We have them there. The next step, we have to line them up one over the other. So love makes time pass. We bring the last term and make it, uh, well, in this case, actually, we're not going to make it first. And I'll explain why. What we have here is a verb. And chiasmus usually does not have the verbs move from last to first. In this case, we would have to bring down the verb just like a middle term, but keep it at the end. So what we're left with is love makes time. We bring time and move it to the front. And then we bring love and move it before pass, then bring down the word makes to the middle. So love makes time pass and time makes love pass. Is that what's there? Yeah, love makes time pass, and time makes love pass. That is chiasmus. Notice that peculiarity with that verb, pass, because the idea that the author is trying to get forward here is that love makes time pass, go away, and time makes love pass, go away. You have to keep the verb at the end. And what you're left with is the rest of the phrase. Here's another example. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And John F. Kennedy said this. There are the words that repeat. We isolate them, then we stack them one over another. Again, ask not what, we have to keep that off to the side. Just like those who in the earlier example and pass in the previous example. Bring it straight down, and then draw the arrow from the last term. So you make it first, your country make it last, can do for the middle term, comes straight down, and you put the, word, the words ask not what before it. So what you're left with 
is ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. It's a different type of chiasmus, but it's a chiasmus nonetheless. There are different types. Trivia. Chiasmus is a Greek word, which means crossing or making a key. That letter in Greek is pronounced key. Because we can visually map this structure by drawing an X. Arrows that move around the first and last terms of the first phrase and make them a reversed order in the second phrase. One last example. People can't change the truth, but the truth can change people. So first step, we isolate the words that repeat. Then we stack them one over the other, draw the arrow. So people can't change the truth. We take the last term, draw an arrow, make it first, the truth. Take the first term, make it last, people, and bring the middle term straight down. But like I said earlier, you can change the verb from a negative to a positive verb or from a positive to the negative verb. So the truth can change people. So people can't change the truth, but the truth can change people. Reverse structures, different idea. One is talking about the people and how the truth is higher than them, and the other is talking about how the truth is higher than the people. If you're interested in more about chiasmus and how it works, you can go to the next video that discusses antimetaboly and parallelism. Both are present in chiasmus. It'll deepen your knowledge about what chiasmus exactly is. Thanks for watching. <music>